We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms. Get better yields. And build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Caro, are you ready for the new series of Shamba Shepherd? Of course I am, Tony. And this season we have a special theme, farming as a business. That's right. In the course of this series, we'll be giving our farmers this free Shamba Shepherd record book. We want our farmers to make more money from farming. And keeping records is just the first step. And I'm taking the first step in finding our first Shamba. Okay, let's go. This week, we are in Embu County, not far from Embu Town. It's well known for its busy streets and monuments. The Shamba covers two acres and lies south of Mount Kenya. The farm is in the mountain's rain shadow. So, getting enough water is a constant struggle. Extra supplies are delivered in canisters by a local trader. And here's our farmers, Cecily Mushiri and her eldest son, Charles. Charles has just finished studying at Agricultural College and he's got some great ideas. Do they need any more advice? Well, let's go and find out. Cecily, how are you? How are you? We've arrived. Can you show us your farm? Okay. Even though the farm does not get high rainfall, our farmers still manage to grow a variety of crops. This is where they grow maize. They are purples. And thanks to Charles, a new innovation, vegetables in a bag garden. And there is livestock too, including pigs. And despite the low rainfall, there is even a fish pond. Ah, very nice. Shamba, Karo, what do you think? Ah, very nice, very nice. Well done. And we have a Shamba Shepa record book. This is for you. Thank you. You're going to put all the records you have in your Shamba, whatever you get, yeah. whatever money you make, and the losses, so that you can know whether your farm is making any business for you. So Charles, do you think farming is a good business for a young person like you to get involved in? Of course, it's very important and very productive. And from the word go, I've seen it work with other people. That's wonderful. So these are young entrepreneurs taking agriculture to the next level. I'm, I'm so proud of mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Okay, now in your day-to-day -day activities in the Shamba, I'm sure you do encounter some problems here and there. The main challenge is the construction of the pig My biggest problem is water. Well, we are here and Shamba Shape Up is here. We'll work with you and basically make sure that your Shamba is shaped up. We have a lot of work to do, so we want to set out to work immediately. We'll yes. see you later. Okay. Mm. Thank you. So, no time to waste. Let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Hey, Tony. Are you ready for today's hard work? Yes, Carol. Looking forward to it. Good. We are going to find out about the benefits of pig farming. All about planting maize in a dry land area. And you know, I'm going to first test for soil quality. And after the results, I'm going to find out what kind of fertilizer to use. See you later. See you later, Carol. And I see our first expert, Ian, from Crop Nuts. He's already arrived. Time to find out why doing a soil test is so important to getting a big harvest. Ian, I can see you've already met our farmer. Yeah. You've met our young entrepreneur? Yeah, we have young people in the industry. Uh, Cecil, have you ever done soil test on this land? No, you've never done. Mm. Uh, Charles, yes. why do you think it is important to do a soil test? If it's not giving you what you expect, then you need to find out what's the problem in the soil. Mm -hmm what is in excess or what is in raw, uh -huh. so that you can add or reduce. I'm impressed. Did you hear that? I'm shocked. Yeah. I told you, I keep learning every day. And uh, how much yield have you been getting on this land, Mama? When the rains are low, you can get nothing. You can harvest very little food. Okay. But when rains are good, 
the harvest is good. So when there is good rain, there is good harvest. When there is no rain, the harvest goes down. Uh, when you do a soil test, mm, we get a condition of your soil in terms of the nutrients available, the acidity, and also the organic matter in the soil. And the organic matter plays a big role when it comes to water retention in your soil. So a soil test will tell us whether your soil has enough organic matter. And therefore, if the organic matter levels are good, your soil will be able to hold enough water. So even if the rains don't come, ama they come when in small amounts, your soil will be able to retain that little amount of moisture and you'll be able to get something at the end of it all. So does it mean if you do a soil test, your harvest is going to improve? One, we'll know the exact amount of nutrients in your soil. Like Charles has said, when your soil is not giving you what you expect, there's a problem. So last week I was here, I took a soil sample, we took it to the lab, we do the analysis, and for sure we have the results for you. Mom and Charles, you can have this one, you can share it. So it's true what Mama Charles said, you have not been getting yields as you are expecting. Yes. And from the soil test, it's reflected here. Mm. We saw that the levels of phosphorus are very low in your, mm. in your shamba. And I know Charles can help us here. Uh, what is the importance of phosphorus in your soil? The phosphorus helps in the growth of the or formation of the roots. Very correct, as you have heard Mama Charles from Charles. Mm. Phosphorus is very important when it comes to root formation. Because if you don't have healthy roots in your plant, definitely the plant will not be healthy. It will be thin discolored, very short, mm -hmm. and when it comes to yields, the yields will be very little. Very little. Mm -hmm. So this is what has been causing you to have small yields. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. So now, what can I do to get enough phosphorus? We not only give you the levels of nutrients in your soil, but we also give you recommendations. The CropNuts soil test report comes with two pages. The first contains the results. The second page contains the recommendations. And from our recommendations, we have recommended that you use Mavuno fertilizers. They have very good fertilizers, which are blended together. They provide phosphorus in your soil, mm -hmm. calcium, magnesium, and even sulfur. So you can use this fertilizer when you're planting, and your roots will be good. Many farmers are complaining of their farms having high levels of acidity. Yes. How do you control that? In many farms in Kenya, we have been having issues with acidity. And mostly acidic soils will be found in areas which receive high amounts of rainfall. And that is probably in the highland regions. Mm -hmm. Why so? When the rainfalls are high, the nutrients will be leached. They will be taken down to a level that the plants cannot make use of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it was to happen mm -hmm. that the soil is acidic, mm -hmm. what would you do? We have a product called agricultural lime. And mainly it has calcium. So when you apply lime in the soil, it's like a soil condition. It improves your soil. It reduces the acidity. Add lime at least two weeks before planting. The longer, the better. It can take six to 12 months before the lime is fully taken up by the soil. You will need to add around 1.2 tons of lime per acre to lower the acidity of the soil by one point, as explained in the soil test report. So when you are applying lime, you're conditioning the soil and you're solving the issues of acidity. And only this can be got from a soil test. So when you do a soil test, it's a better route to getting better profit and better yield. Our farmers want to plant maize. So now we have the soil test results. We need an expert to make sure our farmers are choosing seed that is suitable for this dryland area and are planting in a way that retains maximum rainwater. So I've asked Imani from Sidco to come and give us some advice. What have you been planting? Uh, maize. Maize. Yeah, the Duma 43. Duma 43. Mm. Yeah, Duma 43 is a Sidco product mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually one of our major products. What have you been experiencing with this kind of, of maize, the Duma 43? So the, the seeds themselves mm -hmm. are okay, mm -hmm. but now the challenge comes to rainfall mm -hmm. and maybe the other issues on the soil. So how many bags have you been getting roughly per season? Uh, per acre. Yes. That is between 18 to 20 bags. 18 to 20 bags per acre, is that good or is that bad? Uh, it is n not very bad, but he can still do more. 
mm. because the seed has a potential of 30 bucks per acre. Yeah. Is there anything more that they should do or anything better other than what you've talked about? What we encourage the farmer to do is when you are preparing your land, you make sure that you're doing something we call double digging. Double digging means you, you hit the first hole on the ground and then you repeat the same on the same point uh, so that you can create enough soil service that can hold enough water for your crop. When you dig very shallow, what happens is that you, you have very little soil. After a short rainfall, you, all the soil is wet and then uh, you hit a hard pan and then uh, the, the water starts flowing on, on the soil and that's what we call runoff. Single digging or conventional plowing using a disc plow does not break the hard pan. The layer of compacted earth just underneath the soil surface. If the hard pan is not broken, rainwater runs off before it can get to the plant's roots. Double digging, that is digging twice in the same place to create a deeper hole, breaks the hard pan and ensures when it rains, crops benefit from all the water. But what else should farmers do? What I would want to point out is that it is very, very important to ensure that you plant timely. Especially in such a place, we encourage the farmers to do dry planting. When you're like expecting rains in a week's time, you do your planting. Now, so that from the first uh, drop that of rain that you fall, you will be able to take advantage. We also encourage the farmer not to plant the seed very shallow uh, because in the event you get just very light showers, the seed will start germinating and if you don't get enough rainfall, then the seed will rot and die. Dry planting is a great technique to ensure the crop gets the maximum benefit from the rain. The seed can even be planted some weeks before the rain is expected. But it's important it's buried at least 10 centimeters deep into the soil to stop the seed germinating too early if there is only a light shower. They are saying they've been planting Duma 43. I don't know, is that the right kind of seed to plant in this particular area? Duma 43 is a good variety for this area. We have been growing it around this area and it's been doing very, very well and farmers have been getting good yields from it uh, because of uh, two reasons. One, remember we, we are talking about uh, an area that is depressed of rainfall mm -hmm. and therefore you need a variety that is able, number one, to mature very early and, and very fast and number two, you need a variety that is able to withstand the drought and Duma 43 is one of the varieties. Within 90 days, you have ready food on the table from the planting date. Uh, we also recently introduced another variety that we are calling Sungura 301. Mm -hmm. Sungura 301 matures within 75 days. So, uh, which is even more appropriate and suitable for this area. And it is also able to tolerate drought very, very, very well. Now we have two varieties that are suitable for this place, and which is Duma 43 or Sungura 301. So if yep. I want to get the Sungura, mm -hmm. where do I get it? Uh, Sungura 301 is available in all the agrovets. Is, is it affordable to, to anybody? Can anyone afford it? Yes, it is uh, totally uh, affordable. And uh, one other thing that is important to remember, the cheapest component in, in uh, food production is seed. When you buy from Seedco, you even get your money back if the rains fail. Check for the guarantee card inside the park for more details. Well, Tony, that was great advice. But on this farm, Charles is the real expert. That's right, and we've asked him to share with us his top tip in farming. The idea I want to recommend to the farmers in semi-arid areas is the bug garden. You don't need very much water. You only need approximately 25 or 30 liters at most to produce the between 7 to 10 kgs of skumawiki. But on the land, you need not less than 100 liters to produce the same amount of skuma week. And now that I've seen it work, and I'm sure with other farmers, it's very helpful. Vegetable bag gardens are good for you, your health, and your pocket. And quite economical too. So, Coming up after the break. Choosing the right fertilizer. And the benefits of being a pig farmer. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We want to find out about choosing the right fertilizer. And the benefits of pig farming. So, no time to waste? Let's get to work. So, we've done the soil test. Chosen which made seed. And now it's time for planting. Next, 
we need to find out about the best fertilizer to use. And I see George is already adopting the double digging technique seed co advice. Good. Now, here's Morris from Avuno to help us right on time. He's quite an expert, isn't he? Oh, very, very, very much. Much of an expert. He's actually even teaching me some few things, eh? So from one hole to the other, how have you spaced? From one hole to the other, mm -hmm. it's 30 centimeters. Ah! And between lines, 75 centimeters. Wow! Yeah. And is that correct? Uh, actually, the, that's the right one because mm -hmm. when it comes to fertile soils, eh, yes. the, the spacing has to be a bit small because the land has yes. the, the fertility that is recommended mm -hmm. for the plants. So if, it, if you have a less fertile land, yes. you have to do the spacing a bit bigger, ah. 90 by 30 mm -hmm. in case. So Charles, how did you do it? Show us. I used the tap. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to place it from where you left to the other side and that has to be 75 and that's here ah, you see that's good that's yeah. good and then on the line mm -hmm. you can do it from here and then and it should be 30 then you can mark mm. to show you the the ah, space from so you already yeah. marked it yeah mm -hmm. is this the right way of doing it actually it's the best because that will reduce the labor wow wow it will save you on time because at the end of the day if you've already marked it's easier for you just go digging digging mm -hmm. Oh, well done, Charles. Well done. This is going to be quite interesting. An expert meeting an expert. Yeah. So where do we go from Let's here? Let's plant and add the fertilizer. Fertilizer and planting. Yeah. Let's do it. Look at all this. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. So you've got the gloves. Yeah. Put on the gloves. So now you actually take a bottle cup full, eh? Yeah. Per hole, eh? Mm -hmm. So you just place it there. After placing it, you cover a bit so that the seed doesn't come in contact with the fertilizer. Ah. Yeah. So that cover a bit so do you put the the seed and the fertilizer in the same hole so what, once your people are putting the fertilizer someone can come back at the back place one by one seed, place the seed and then cover yeah put oh. and cover why shouldn't the seed and the fertilizer touch each other mm -hmm. the fertilizer has a tendency of burning the seed oh. so you'll plant then yes. the crop would come out oh the yeah. seed will, will be burned burn. yeah for this land, eh, yeah. we are putting one, one cup full. Eh? One cup full. Uh -huh. What if uh -huh. the soil was not for fertile? Fertility, you have to do a soil test first before you actually know. For mm -hmm. this case, we have already done a soil test. Yes. So we already know yes. what's supposed to be added. <laughs> okay. Now that's done, let's go and discuss more about Mavuno fertilizer. So, all right. Okay. This is good, Boris. I yeah. can see you've already set up. Yeah, yeah. Today you are the expert, briefly. Why should farmers use fertilizer? They hasten the growth of the plant, and on the other hand, they are not harmful to the plant. Is he right? Yeah, very, very right. Because fertilizers are food to the crop. Sure. It's what you put inside the soil so that it can be food for the crop so that it can grow eventually. Each time we harvest, we take away nutrients from the soil. This need to be replaced. And Mavuno fertilizer contains the right balance of new nutrients to help the crops grow properly. We've done a lot of good work today planting using Mavuno fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Why should farmers use Mavuno fertilizer? Mavuno fertilizers, they are actually made in Kenya and research oriented that are made specifically for these particular soils in Kenya. We are crop and soil specific. Fertilizers based on whatever you're growing and whichever soil you're growing them in. So if you have for maize, there's Mavuno fertilizer for maize, for beans, for coffee. Why are they specific according to the plant being grown? Different plants have different requirements in terms of the nutrition. The same way, let me give for example, when you're growing maize, when it comes to harvesting, the part that you're actually interested in is the cob. When it comes to the potato, it's the root tubers. When it comes to the vegetables, it's the leaves. So, what yeah. does your fertilizers contain in terms of nutrients? Mavuno fertilizers are NPK-based fertilizers. NPK as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Besides that, we added secondary nutrients in form of calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Beyond that, we also added micronutrients, zinc, boron, copper, molybdenum, and manganese. So all that in one fertilizer. So one fertilizer has 11 nutrients inside of them. What did you plant last season? Maize. Like how many bags per acre? Approximately 20 bags. By using this, yeah. Mavuno fertilizer, does he expect more from one acre? Of course, yes because he expects at least an increase in 30% of the yield based on what you're getting right now, 20 bags per acre. So we want to increase that to 26 bags. Are they available? Yeah, basically Mavuno fertilizer are available in every Agodilla shop that is near you. 
Our final expert today is Ignatius from Unga. George has decided to keep pigs. They can be a very profitable business if done right. So, let us see what Ignatius thinks. Ignatius, yes. this is our farmer Charles. Yes. Now Charles, how long have you been keeping pigs? Mm, approximately eight months. Eight months? Yeah. You're very new at this. Of course. Why did you decide on pigs? I like how they respond to feeds. They take short time to get to the market mm -hmm. and that's it. Is it profitable to keep pigs? Yes, it's very much profitable. Which brings me to the pig sty here. Yeah. By your observation, do you think it matches the standards you, uh, you want? I can see you did a very good job Thank by you. locating the pig sty far from your houses so that there's no so much disturbance coming to the pigs. Okay. You also did very well by raising the floor up from the ground until where it is, yeah. so that when this drainage of water does not get into, into okay. the pig sty. Pig sty. Okay. You also did so well to ensure that you build the floor and you kept an area where there's a feed trough and a water trough yeah. and a resting area. You've also built the walls and left some space so that fresh air can mm. get inside. Ignatius, where should Charles improve on? It's first by extending the roof so that it can ensure because rain comes with a lot of wind, that rainwater does not get into the pigsty. The sun also has a very direct stress into the pigs that are staying here. You heard what Charles said, he feeds his pigs on. What would you advise him on that? I've brought in some feeds. I come, I show you how you should go about the feeding. Good. Buying good quality feed for your pigs is an investment that more than pays off when you come to sell as they grow much faster. Unga has a special three-stage feeding system to ensure the pigs grow fast with a good body weight and quality meat. So, what's the first stage? This one is called Fugo Pig Repellets. Yes. It is given to piglets from seven days up to eight weeks. Increase the quantities slowly up to half a kilo until they can be able to consume one a kilo. And uh, the benefit of using pig repellets is it prepares the stomach so that it can be able to digest the solid food after winning. It ensures that your pig grows faster so that they can be able to gain good weights. When the piglets are that young, yeah. how much water should you give them per day? You should ensure that there is water at all times so that any time the piglet wants to take water, it has free access to water. And what's the second stage? So once eight weeks are over, you introduce gradually the piglets to Fugo, So and Una. They are in solid, yes, yeah. but in much more small particles compared to the pellets. Exactly. Yeah. So that is what we refer to as mash. And uh, we normally recommend for this So and Una meal just to be given in form of wet diet. Wet feeds, yeah. yeah. It ensures that the pig will get weight faster and also have a good quality meal. By good quality meat, we refer to as meat which is lean, meat which has good marbling effect, especially for the machomas. So what ratio do you mix the, the feed with yeah. water? One kilogram of the feed, you also use one liter of water. And for how long? The sow and winner meal should be fed to pigs until they achieve 60 kilograms. Uh, you have to have the weighing band so that you can keep weighing your pigs. Okay, and the last stage. Once the pig has attained 60 kilograms, you transition gradually to Fugo pig finisher meal. What is the difference between this and this? The sow and winner meal helps the pig internally, the internal organs to develop and be able to grow and this one finishes off the pig by ensuring that it grows big so that you can be able to sell the pig when it's ready for market. For the pig finisher, we recommend you give it as a wet meal, 2.5 kilograms per day of pig finishing. Mix with? When you take one kilogram of pig finishing meal, you mix with one liter of water. For how long exactly should you feed this to the pigs? This one we recommend by six months that your pig will have achieved a weight of more than 70 kilos. With all this advice, 
George's pig business is certain to grow. So, we decided to enlarge the pig house and follow the improvements Ignatia suggested. More space for more pigs, a sloping floor for easy cleaning, and a larger roof to keep out the sun and the rain. All done! More space means more room for pigs. And when using Unga pig feed, that means bigger profit. Wow, wow, what, what a, a shape up. What a day. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things, much more about my project on the pigs. What has impressed me most is that soil can be tested. So you know what to do on your soil professionally. And I will not have problems with my farm. That is good. Yeah, Caro, yeah. you have also learned a lot from you. Because from your records, it shows that you, 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 your shamba is not doing too badly. So yeah? far, so good. And keep Thank it you. up, keep yeah. it up. Yeah. Records are quite important. Very important. Mm -hmm. And to show you just how important they are, when we come back, we're going to look at it and see whether you're making any progress mm -hmm. or you are slowing down. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> well, Caro. Our work here is done. So, we'll see, see you in the, the next shamba. shamba.